Hello, this is Dave Hurwitz, Executive Director at ClassicsToday.com, here to talk to you about those amazing classical composers' sexual aids. I'm referring, of course, to castanets. Now, you may be wondering what you could possibly do with castanets. You'd be amazed, let me tell you, because one day I was sitting around, minding my own business, listening to the Venusberg Bacchanal from Tannhäuser, Wagner's Tannhäuser. You know that. It's this 20-some-odd-minute-long ballet that he added to the Paris version of the opera because you gotta have a ballet in Paris. You have to have a ballet. Well, traditionally, the ballet is went into the third act or the second act or some way so that the ballet people could come in late and watch the ballet and then leave. I don't know. There was some silly French rule about where the ballet goes. We don't need to go into it. But there was no place in Tannhäuser to put the ballet except act one, which meant that all the ballet mavens who were showing up late missed the ballet and it caused a huge riot, the jockey club riot. It's very famous in music history. And Tannhäuser was a flap. A flop, a flap, it flapped and flopped. It flopped, and so Wagner hated France from then on. And as a result, we got Hitler and World War II, and he invaded Paris and all the rest just because of the Jockey Club riot, because of the ballet and the first act of Tannhäuser. Now, the first act of Tannhäuser ballet is a bacchanal. It's an orgy. And as the orgy is going on and Venus is overseeing her subjects, orgicize, all of a sudden you hear <laughs> or something like that. It's in some rhythm. It's the only rhythm in Wagner, basically. Wagner, after that, gave up rhythm, as we know. And I thought to myself, holy cow, are those castanets? So... So I, I ran to my score and opened it up, and sure enough, he couldn't have an orgy without castanets. I mean, what on earth are the castanets doing there? What are you supposed to do with them? Have you ever tried to have sex with castanets? I mean, they get in the way. Believe me, they do, and especially the ones that they use in classical productions because there are many different types of castanets. Now, usually, you know, we think of, you know, the ones that you just get your fingers that, you know, that Carmen hangs on to, right? You know, just those two things. You put a string on your thumb and you wrap it around your forefinger and then you, you do this with your fingers and that makes the castanets clack. But classical percussionists cannot use regular castanets. That takes years and years of practice and training just for that instrument alone. And most of us don't have the time. So we cheat. We use as our sexual aids these things. These are castanets on a stick. These are great because you just put them on your knee. But since I'm sitting down, I can't do that. I'll just I'll just show you. <laughs> Terrific, aren't they? That's one way to do them. If you need castanets, sometimes you get them on a stick and they have one castanet on each side. You can wiggle it back and forth like a clacker sort of thing and, and get trills because composers write trills for castanets for some strange reason. So now you it's possible for Anybody can, you know, to do the back and Al in Tannhäuser. But here's the weird thing. It wasn't just Wagner. Everybody uses them in their back and Al's. Think, think of the back and Al from Samson and Delilah. You know, that's, that's got, that, that goes. Bum, 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 ba -da -dum, ba -da -dum, bum, 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 And not only wooden castanets, but Sanson also wants steel castanets, which nobody has, by the way. I mean, they don't exist. I mean, they sort of do. I mean, you have to sort of, it's, it's an effort to get to the steel castanet and wood castanet business. It's absolutely crazy. But there you go. The back and out from Samson and Delilah. If you're a Philistine, you can't have your orgy without your castanets. I mean, Ravel uses them in, in, the, in the final, the final back and Alan, Daphnis and Chloe, just as the orchestra starts moaning and groaning ecstatically, out come the castanets. And not just any castanets, because we use now, if the sticks aren't available, if these kinds aren't around, then you use 
Aha, this this contraption, this is the ultimate ultimate sexual aid in classical music orgy scenes. I have absolutely no idea how they came up with this, but these are called machine castanets and they are quite a miracle of engineering. As you can see, there's like a little screw here that holds the thing and, and these are spring loaded. See, there's a spring there and that keeps the castanet flap on here. And then you just, you know, clack away at them. Now, these machine castanets, because of the way they're mounted, as you can hear, they don't have that wonderful, you know, snap and resonance that the ones on sticks do, or, you know, never mind the real, the real thing, right? And these were the ones, for example, you may have seen the video where I talked about the obnoxious Carmen who had me playing her castanets because she, of course, was just some, you know, waitress who thought she could sing and she didn't know how to use real castanets. So I used my machine castanets to mess her up, basically. And that's what you use. But, you know, in pieces like Daftus and Chloe, where you've got, you know, trills at the end, you know, and you're going, you know, like that. So even even Salome's dance, you know, Salome, her seduction scene, you know, she's got nine percussionists and a 120 piece orchestra going on behind her. But sure enough, at the climax of her revealing herself with her seven veils, maybe when she's gotten to her left breast or something, I don't know, it depends how it works, out come the castanets. Strauss couldn't have sex without castanets. It's a fascinating musical fact that I really think you should be aware of because I've always said, you know, that classical composers were kind of abnormal, you know, in so many ways. Well, this is just another, it's just another, no matter where you put your orgy, or even if you're doing a solo, well, I mean, solo for somebody, I suppose. I, I've never seen any autoerotic castanet music, let's put it that way. But you cannot have sex in classical music without castanets. And if you'll notice, there's one other thing, because we started this talk with Wagner, and that's where I think we should end it. You know, in Tristan and Isolde, you know, where you have the Liebesnacht, you, know, you may say, well, where are the castanets? There aren't any castanets in the Liebesnacht. Well, that's true, but there's also no sex in the Liebesnacht, remember, because at that point in his career, Wagner's sex was entirely psychosomatic. They actually don't really do anything. They just sit there and they sing about your day is my night and your night is my day and your darkness is my lightness and I was dark until your light lightened my dark. You know, they, 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 a friend of mine said they sound like two high school kids smoking pot for the first time. And they do. It's the truth. And they just sit there and jabber back and forth like that until King Mark shows up, right? And, and that's the end of it. So, there isn't any sex in Tristan and Isolde. There's ju they just think about sex a lot. So when you're thinking about sex in Wagnerian terms, there's no castanets. But when you're really doing it, then you can't do it without your castanets. So that is today's little music chat. I hope you've enjoyed this. I am the Dr. Ruth Westheimer of the classical music world. So just keep in mind, folks, if you're going to do it right, do it with castanets. And keep on listening. You'll hear where they are because you're all a bunch of musical voyeurs, aren't you? Thank you. Take care.